You were waiting for Jeff Halfley to make a splash in New Jersey? Well, on Sunday, Jeff Halfley did exactly just that with a huge commitment. All of this and more on today's Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Boston College. I'm your host, A.J. Black. On Sunday, Jeff Halfley and his staff landed one of the most impressive commitments of the Class of 23 with Pensacken safety from the Class of 2023, Khalil Ali. He's a three-star recruit, but ranked the sixth-ranked overall recruit in the state of New Jersey. Now, Ali, if I could tell you, I've been following this kid's commitment for about a year and a half now, and Boston College has been all over this kid. He is um, a huge, very quick safety. He's about 6'1", 190, but he can also run. He uh, is on the track team at Pensacken. And I am I am a big fan of this. This was one of the kids at the beginning of last year that I, I had circled as, BC needs to land Khalil Ali. And... As the progress had been going on, I I had put BC's hopes of landing Ali lower and lower and lower. It just seemed like okay, Louisville, they, you know, they're clearly playing with money now. They're having kids show up and you know stretch limousines and private jets. That seems tough. And he's got a cousin that plays there. That's gonna be hard. Okay, uh, there's Cincinnati. You know, I heard they were pressing him hard. They're a playoff team. Blah 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 blah. Uh, you know, it just seemed to me like BC was going to go to the back burner here. But all it took, all it took for Khalil Ali to commit was that official visit. He came here last week or over this week, and that sealed the deal. He canceled his final recruiting weekend, I think it was at Pittsburgh, and he committed to the Eagles. And this this commitment, it checks a lot of boxes. First of all, you get a kid that you know he's on two four seven as a point eight eight on the three star scale. That is right, right on the edge of being a four star. And unfortunately, he's committing to Boston College, so he's not going to ever get that four star. But you know where he stands. He's another one of those kids that's right on that edge. So Jeff Halfley, he may not be getting the four stars, but he's getting those kids that have tons of offers here. And that's exactly what you want at Boston College. In addition, as I said before, he checks off the the boxes for speed. BC is landing up and down this roster. They just landed uh, Nate Johnson, the three-star wide receiver. He's a wide receiver. I said he was a defensive back earlier. He's actually a wide receiver, so correction there. Um, a track star, Khalil Ali, track star. You know, Roderick Pleasant, who's hopefully going to come here. Track star. These kids are burners. BC is building a program here from the base up built around speed. Now, Jeff Halfley has talked about this since the moment he walked on campus. This team needs to get faster. This team needs to get faster. And he's he's showcasing through his recruiting that this is not just a an empty saying here, that this is going to be something that he has to fix. And this is exactly what he does here with Khalil Ali. Now, Ali is one of the best uh, in term in, in terms of speed. Like now, you're looking at BC and their secondary. You're looking at all these players that they're they're bringing aboard, and you have burners all over that field right now. C.J. Burton, speed. Jalen Williams, kid we haven't even seen play yet, is has broken tracks records for Boston College playing for the track and field team. You have him coming up. You have uh, Amari Jackson. You have all these kids that have really good speed. That's going to start paying dividends on the defensive side of the ball when BC is swarming all around the ball. Now, you want to see that speed, too, at the linebacker position. You want to see that up, up front a little bit, too. And I think that's what they're building, right? All around on that defense, it's all about speed. You Instead of having the Joseph Sparacios, and to an extent, Vinny De Palmer, no offense to him, he's, he, he, you need guys like him, but your, your, your mainstay linebackers now are the 
are the hybrids, right? The Cam Arnolds, the Bryce Steels, those are speed guys. Those are guys that are faster. They can get to that ball faster. And that's that's the defense that Halfley and Tem Lokabu have have blueprinted here for Boston College. And that's where these commitments are making that mark. So I, I love this commitment for BC. And, you know, I think this one was a bit of a surprise. As I said before, when you're going against all these big-time schools... You, you you know it's tough and uh, and they're not the biggest schools but you love to see BC win these battles because so many times under Frank Spaziani, Steve Adazio, BC had no shot when they were going up against a team like you know Louisville or West Virginia because they just didn't have the 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 chops behind it to sell the program that they that they have here at Boston College well. Jeff Halfley has done a tremendous job of being able to say to these kids, you know, this school can get you this beyond the the, end, the, the your uh, football career. You can get this type of education here. We have these NIL deals here. We can do this. We can do that. This is what you're going to do on the field. This is what I can hopefully get you into the NFL. Those visions are starting to pay dividends on the recruiting trail, and it's paid dividends all, all around, right? And... We talked about this last week with Christian Mahogany's injury. BC is starting to build depth and quality depth that hopefully will sustain and get them deeper and get them more talent up and down their roster so that when a guy goes down like Phil Dracovic or Christian Mahogany, that there's other guys that you're like, okay, right? Because in like two or three years, you look at this defensive back group and you're going, okay, if this guy goes down, we have Sione Hollow, we have Khalil Ali, we have Carter Davis, we've got X, Y, and Z here. You know, you got all these guys now that you're, you've are you been excited about for years that are going to start all coming in now that you can start to fill in these spots with. And I, I think Ali, you know, he, he could be a tweener, he could be a straight up safety. He's an exciting guy. And in our second segment... It's not just the player itself that excites me. It's Jeff Halfley making his stamp in the state of New Jersey. I'm going to tell you why this was such a massive commitment in the Garden State in just a moment. Now, Bet Online has got you covered as their no- as your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. I love using them for their player props. They had, uh, they. I mean, you want to watch a baseball game and you're going, okay. I think JD Martinez is going to get over a one and a half uh, total bases in this game. You can find that. You say I want. I think JD Martinez is going to have over a half a home run. You can find that. You can. I mean. The sky's limit. Whatever you're thinking of doing, BetOnline has got you covered. It's fast and it's super easy to use. Uh, and they got you with everything, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Head on over to BetOnline, where the game starts. This is Locked On Boston College. Thank you, every single one of you that have made you us your first listen every morning. If you wake up every morning, you get in your car and you turn on Locked On Boston College and you make this part of your daily routine, I want to thank you. Honestly, thank you so much because without your support, this podcast would not happen. We are the only, the only daily Boston College podcast and it's because of you. I do this every day because I know you guys love it and I want to continue to build this into something big. So thank you all who have made this part of your daily routine. So Khalil Ali, Three stars, big time offer list, six one, big physical, fast safety, an uh, uh, an under the radar but big get for Boston College. But as I said, this isn't just about the commitment itself. That is such a big deal for the Eagles, because yeah, you can get big recruits all over the place, and that happens all the time. This was the first commitment for Boston College in the class of twenty three from the state of New Jersey. And when you have guys like Savon Huggins, who is a New Jersey legend, he is the running backs coach now, replacing Richie Gannell. And you have Jeff Halfley, obviously a New Jersey guy back there. You want to be able to make your print 
in the Garden State. Because right now, it seems weird, but Rutgers is doing an excellent job of recruiting that state. If you look at 247's top 25 in the state, and, and New Jersey's deep enough that they could, uh, that, that it's worth looking at. It's not like you're looking at like, you know, five really good recruits and then a bunch of like, okay, these guys aren't going to play. 25 is good. Five are committed to Rutgers right now, with many of the other ones still considering the Eagle. I mean, still considering the Scarlet Knights. Chase Bizantis, their number one recruit in the state, a borderline five star, number 57 in the country, an offensive lineman from Don Bosco Prep, he has Rutgers in his final grouping. So, credit to Greg Schiano for being able to resurrect a program that just seemed dead in the water, that had no momentum going ever since they went to the Big Ten, and now they're starting to get some buzz. Now, I've been, you know, I've always thought BC is not going to even go head-to-head with Rutgers, and some of the people I've talked to, they're like, yeah, we don't even want to consider Rutgers a rival there. Uh, But you have to at this point, right? You have to be able to look at Rutgers and say, okay, this is a a school that's able to recruit the state. They're in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is obviously one of the big two conferences at this point. BC needs to be able to go in there and say, okay, we're going to still get our guys. We're still going to get the guys that are important to us. Now, Byzantis was important, the number one recruit in that state. He came to BC on an unofficial visit last year. That being said, you know, that happens. You're going to lose some of the guys that are not, you know, you know, that are not totally interested in BC. BC just landed the number six guy, right? The guy right after the four stars BC got, you know, so the so if you look at who BC the guys that the top guys in the in the state right, Byzantis I'm not gonna say he's gonna end up at Rutgers he won't he'll end up at like USC or some other blue blood country, uh, school. Next schools number two is at Notre Dame number three is at Ohio State number four is at Georgia number five is at Penn State number six Boston College. That right there is a big time deal for Boston College. And I think that is why this Khalil Ali commitment is a big deal for Boston College in the in the Garden State. You know, they're still looking at other kids in that in that in that um in New Jersey. But to get a guy of this caliber that's at the top, that has good offers, that's borderline four star, that shows that BC is not a second thought in um in the in New Jersey. That they're not you know, below Rutgers, they're below everyone. When they go in there and they focus, they get the the relationships with these kids, with their coaches, with their families. They're able to bring those kids and get them to Chestnut Hill. I told you at the beginning of the show, Khalil Ali, for, at, for a while, I thought Boston College had a very re- remote chance of getting him for a while. But what happened? They got him on campus. He met the staff. He met the players. He saw the culture. He saw what BC's about. And they were able to change that. And that is what the power of Jeff Halfley's staff is right now. That's what they're able to do on the recruiting trail. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I said a couple of weeks ago, if you go back into the archives, that I don't care that Boston College doesn't get every recruit in Massachusetts or even all the good recruits in Massachusetts because it's not some of the things that you want, you can't do anything about. Like um, Samson Okunlola, right? The big offensive tackle, five-star out of Somerville. Like they've had him on campus a bunch of times. They've sold him on this cam- on this on this program and he never, ever, ever puts them in his, his groupings. Jonella Garrow too. They had him on campus. He can't do anything about that. Like, what are they supposed to do? What is B? Like, is there a magic pill? Oh, well, I'm sure there is, but we're not going to talk about that right now. They could get a kid into Boston College more than Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson. I'm sure you're all holding a big bag of money right now. I'm sure that. And you know what? It's not as icky to think about it now because that's exactly what's going on. But there's not much you can do at this point with these elite recruits. And so if Boston College strikes out on some of these kids in Massachusetts, I don't care. I want to see them going to these power programs, like I said a couple of weeks ago, like um, Bishop Gorman in Nevada, St. John's Bosco in California, St. Francis Academy in Maryland. These are the programs that I want to see Boston College be successful at. And if the Eagles strike out around here, it doesn't matter to me. If they are able to go into... 
the talent-rich states, the states of Texas, California, Florida, Georgia, and New Jersey, and get more recruits there, that is all that really matters to me. So this was a big deal for Boston College. And, you know, I think looking at New Jersey moving forward in this state, I... Don't not sure how much more they're gonna get. You know, they might get a two or three more guys. Will they be top twenty five? I'm looking at the top twenty five. I don't see a name that has really stood out to me. But does again not matters. You get this elite level New Jersey recruit. You hit that. You set cement yourself in the state. That will pay dividends in twenty four and twenty five. And I, you know, I hate moving down the line a little bit, but every move you make does it ripples. It makes uh, an impact on the. In the present and the future, and this present move obviously, you know, improves the recruiting class that you have, but it also will help move BC forward in the future as well. Now, in our final segment, I'll talk about what's next. Where does Boston College go from here, and where does Boston College's defensive back group look like moving forward? I'll talk about the depth chart moving forward. Welcome back to Locked On Boston College. I'm your host, AJ Black. I'm the editor and publisher of BC Bulletin. Check out my work at bcbulletin.com. So Khalil Ali is one of the newest defensive backs to commit to Boston College, and it really continues to redefine this position for the Eagles moving forward. You know, Boston College going into this season, you know, you look at the depth chart. You have Josh DeBerry, Elijah Jones, uh, even some of the transfers that they have, like Jaden Woodbay. And you don't see a lot of the bigger names that BC has committed locking in at that depth chart position. Excuse me, depth chart in the secondary position. Now that Boston College has really started to add more depth at that position in the last three years, you're going to see that change soon. Now, C.J. Burton is going to be the starting defensive back for the next three years. He's going to be. Starting this year, he'll be a starter. You'll see him year in, year out be there. Um, But you're going to start to see other guys have to step in as well because, you know, after this season, every position is going to be open. You know, Elijah Jones, Josh DeBerry, Jaden Woodby, they're all graduating. So new names are going to have to start to pop up. And this is where you're going to see the Jeff Halfley uh, recruiting strategy really start to pay dividends because you you know twenty you you're you're seeing the Eagles kind of go after this position every other year. 2020, 2020 was the year of C.J. Burton, Sean Asbury, Jalen Cheek. They had a ton of kids come in here, all of them from the secondary position, and then last year they only had one. They only had one, Amari Jackson, that came in, but. You're going to see these kids, this talent pool, start to have to play. So you're going to see, you know, 2023, a starting backfield of, I'm guessing it's going to be Burton, Jalen Cheek, Amari Jackson. Those are the names you're going to want to, you're going to see out there, right? And then you're going to see some of these freshmen pop up too. You look at that safety position. This is this is what Khalil Ali is. He's not a defensive back like those other guys. He is a safety position. You have two safety spots starting this year that I think are giant question marks. You have some kids, you know, the Connor Gricos, the Steve Lubishers, that you don't know that could come in and, and play, and we're not sure. We haven't seen them really fill the role under St- Jeff Halfley yet. They're Steve Adazio guys that have been around and they're loyal soldiers, and maybe they fit the system. We're not sure. I'm not sure. You know, they're, they're, they're going to be those guys. But moving ahead next year. Woodbay's gone. You have that other position. It could be one of the guys I just said, Greco, Lubisher, and they could be out of eligibility too. You could have two new safeties moving in. Now you've got kids like Jameer Jones and um, there's a uh, Jalen Williams. There's there's like a couple different um, safety options that BC has moving forward, but. You're now adding in Sayone Hala. You're adding in these Khalil Ali's and Carter Davis. You got you got more depth here moving forward. I think that's what you're starting to see. You're starting to finally see the safety position really build that depth that is necessary at the collegiate level, right? Listen, folks, <clears throat> we don't want to hear excuses. As Boston College fans, you guys 
last week when Christian Mahogany went down. That's the last thing you want to hear is, oh, we have an injury that is going to devastate our season. College football has a roster of 85 players, sometimes more. And there's no reason that a guy like Jeff Halfley, with the pedigree that he has at that position, at the secondary position, that he can't go out there and build legitimate depth at defensive back, both at corner and safety, because he has the chops to bring in that talent. And Khalil Ali is the latest step, and I'm telling you folks right now, he's it's not going to be the last. So I, I think that you're going to... 2023 will probably be the first real year under Jeff Halfley where that secondary is going to be completely new names that he has brought in. And I think they're going to be exciting because there's a lot of talent that Jeff Halfley has brought in. We'll have to wait and see. Now, I want to wish all the fathers out there a happy related Father's Day. I'm a father myself, and I had a little special treat I promised you guys on social media. I said, um, on Father's Day... I was playing with my son down by my recording equipment and he saw my speaker and he wanted uh, my, my microphone and he wanted to play with it like he always does, my son. And I said to him, you know, leave it alone. We don't want to play. And I said, okay, you know what? I'll let you play with it if I ask you a few questions. So I asked him these questions here and I'll let you hear his answers. I, I wanted to hear his th- views on Boston College. So here's my almost four-year-old's answer to some questions about the BC Eagles. All right. What is your favorite part about Boston College? Uh, seeing, um, seeing, getting popcorn. And what is your favorite part about Jeff Halfley? Of shooting the guns. What is the name of the Boston College mascot? It's Boston College. Yep. What's, what kind of animal is it? Do you remember? Tiger. Oh, we have a tiger mascot? Okay. I thought you guys would enjoy that. If you didn't, I apologize. But that's my son. And just to give you some context, the gun that he's talking about with Jeff Halfley is the t-shirt cannon at the spring game. He loved the popcorn at Alumni Stadium. And I have no idea where the Tigers came from. But anyways... Thought you guys would enjoy that. For all you dads out there who who know exactly all of this kind of fun, uh, happy Father's Day to you all. On Wednesday show, there's got to be more recruiting news. This is, we're like we're we're uh, we're waiting in it right now, and I'm gonna give you all the details and all the updates of everything I've heard. So check out everything at Locked On BC on Twitter or at AJ Black underscore BC as well. And as I said, make sure to check us out on YouTube. We had a YouTube exclusive uh, up last week that's done nice numbers and if you have not checked it out already just go to youtube.com and look up locked on boston college hit that subscribe button you'll get exclusive uh content that you're not going to get here if you're listening on the podcast network thank you all and we'll see you again soon